I declare unto you today you, as I lift up my rod yes. that God will part your Red Sea for you if you put your faith and trust in Him. Yes. I didn't get to come with them, but yeah. we're here this morning, yeah. and we are so glad to be here. Amen. I tell you, you don't look with your eyes when you go into a new church. We've been in this, so many new churches, That's right. and some of them have all the looks of godliness. You get in there, and the devil's just running around everywhere. You go into other places, and it just looks like you're not going to see anything special and the spirit moves. So we have been praying as I said and the Lord has spoken to me about this church and I want to tell you Brother Spivey has given me space before he preaches to tell you what the Lord has told me. The Lord told me that you are ripe for revival and you will never get a good time to have revival. Never good time. But you are going to have to lay aside everything and don't miss your visitation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're ready for revival to be with you. But if you do not see fit to keep bring us back, somebody. to run revival, which I hope you do, you get somebody here because the Lord said you're ripe right. for revival. Thank you. It is your time of visitation. Hey, you must lay aside everything. I know the kids are going to go back to school. Mm. I know that. Thank you. I know you work every day. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Some of you may work at night. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank God for our friends coming in, Brother Chris and Sister Kathy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank God. Thank you, Chief. But you must lay aside everything. Yes, Lord. The Lord said you must. Thank you. And, and I must tell you this. If you don't want to stand up while I'm talking, that's fine. I don't care. My daddy was a preacher. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When he was called, my mother was about 14 years old. The spirit had never moved in that little community where they lived. Somebody brought salvation to that community. And all the young people got saved. All of them just teenagers and young people. Everybody got saved. Only a few families didn't get saved. Wow. They would meet in homes that didn't have a church. Yes. And they'd pray nearly all night long. Good. Good. <clears throat> My mother stood up as a young teenager mm -hmm. and prophesied. They had never heard prophecy in their life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she prophesied and called out four preachers out of that congregation. Yes. Yes. My daddy and three of my uncles. They would begin to ask questions. One said, but I'm smoking. In their, in their heart, I'm smoking. What am I going to do about that? And the Lord said, I can deliver you that. Oh, yes, yes. Through, through my mother. Yes, yes. Answering the question. Yes. My other uncle said, well, what if, you know, I want to play the guitar. What about the guitar? Yes. And she answered that question. Thank you. Thank you. And they went to Florida, the four of them. I'm telling you about laying everything aside. This is what I'm talking about. They went to Florida and put up a little brush arbor, I think it was. And they didn't have the money. Nobody had money to pay them. They went on their own, on their own money. All four of them together. They carried me down there. I was just a baby, about six months old. And <clears throat> when they got down there, they had to work and they picked oranges. Has anybody ever picked oranges? That is the hardest labor you'll ever do except picking cotton. And I do believe it's worse than picking cotton. I've done both of them. And they had to work all day long, not like you do now. They had to carry their ladder down the road, carry their boxes down the road, pick them, bring their ladder back, bring their boxes back to the end of the road. And then at night they had to go to that revival mm -hmm. because they were running a revival. I think that revival lasted about six to eight weeks. Yes. Yes. 
it spawned what is now four different churches, I believe it is, in Florida. Mm -hmm. wow. One breaking off from the other and spawning this one, that one in a different part. Mm -hmm. And you can see them today, some of the big churches wow. were spawned from that revival. Yes. And they had to do that in spite of their job. Right. You hear me? Yes, yes. In spite of their job. Thank you. You must lay everything aside and come for this visitation as God is sending to you right now. And so I'm going to sing about that. I'm going to sing Harvest Time. This is not a fast song. I chose it for the words, not the music. If you're here for the music and you think that's what makes you shout, then you're looking at that wrong. Lord, 
Let them harvest it, Lord, before it falls to the ground. Lord, send revival in the name of Jesus. Touch Brother Spa Music preaches. Let everyone have an ear to hear. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Just give the Lord a good hand of praise this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're worthy of our praises this morning, Father. Hallelujah. Oh, let a caretto so my Oh, mighty God, mighty God, you're worthy this morning, Lord. Hallelujah. You're always worthy of our praises, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Magnify you this morning, Father. Hallelujah. Give you the glory and the honor. Thank you, Jesus. For another day, Lord, that you've given us. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the movement of your spirit this morning, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Thank you, Lord. We're going to be going to the Word of God. Open up your Bibles this morning. Hallelujah. We're going to be talking uh, to you this morning about when God speaks, things start happening. When God speaks, things start happening. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. In Hebrews 4 and 12. Hebrews 4 and 12. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In the beginning of the world, mm -hmm. God spoke, and the world was formed, and it was without form, and it was void. And yes. God created the heavens and the earth. Yeah, 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 yeah. God spoke, yes. and things began to happen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When God speaks, things begin to happen in oh. your life. Hey. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. You know, when He speaks from His Word, we have 66 books in the Bible. Yes, sir. And God speaks through those 66 books, those inspired words of God, Thank speaks you. to our hearts yes. and lets us know how to live, how to structure our lives, how to, yes. how to live a holy life before Him. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you're not involved in the Word of God, then... You're missing it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're missing it. Yes, Lord. You wonder what's happening in your life? Mm -hmm. It's because you're not in the Word. Thank you, Jesus. You have to be in the Word of God. Yes, Lord. You have to learn from the Word of God. Yes, sir. Amen. Thank you. You have to let that Word speak to you, mm. and then things start happening in your life. When he, when Thank you, Jesus. He's not speaking to you. There are things that happen in your life, but they're not of God. Glory and that's where people fall into error yeah. and fall yeah. into trouble. Amen. His word is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Yeah. Verse 12, for the word of God is quick or alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit mm -hmm. and of the joints and marrow and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifested in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. So you can't hide anything from God. If you think you're hiding your petty sins, from God, you're wrong. No. God sees everything in your life. Yes. He sees where you are, who you are, where you've been, where the intents of your heart, yes, sir. what you're thinking. Thank you, Lord. He's got it all. Amen. He knows it all. Woo. He's the all-seeing and all-knowing God that we serve. Lord. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Have you ever really thought about the magnitude of God and His power to create. If you just look around, if you just look around and you see what God has created, you look at some of the things on TV, if you look at uh, uh, Attenberg's uh, view of things, uh, some of you have seen it maybe, I know I have and our family has, how you know the planes fly over the 
the jungles and everything and see all the mountains and the magnitude that God has created yes. and you, you, you just can see the earth and what power God has. What power God has to create. He created us in His image. In the image of God created us in His likeness, in His magnitude. Hallelujah. Can you imagine how the, the human body is put together? Just think about it. <coughs> All the bones and the the tissue and yeah, the yeah, yeah. muscles and the nerves and the blood and the, all those things that God put together. Yeah. How mighty is the God that we serve. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. His word is quick. Yeah. It's powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Yeah. And it goes down in His word. Yeah. Goes down inside of us. Ooh, even down to the bone and into the marrow. That's, that's the very inside. My God and knows the thoughts knows the intents of our hearts he knows what's going on in our lives you think god doesn't know he knows he knows and in psalms it says that he thinks about us he, we are on his mind hallelujah the great creator of heaven and earth we are on his mind he thinks about us why because we're His children. Hey. Hallelujah. We're His creation. He created us for His glory. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In Exodus 14 and 10. Mm. Mm. When Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore have you to deal with thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Why did, you, why did you do that? Is it not, is not uh, this the word that we did tell you in Egypt saying, leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? And if it had been for if it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians then we should die in the wilderness. Good God that's what people are saying now. Leave us alone. We don't want your word. Leave us alone. I don't want to hear the word of God. I don't want you to preach to me. I don't want you to witness to me. Leave me alone. I'd rather die in the world than have the riches of God in my life. That's what people are saying. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And Moses said unto the people, Fear you not and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord which he will show you today for the Egyptians whom you have seen today you shall see them again no more forever people's problems have got them in fear people's problems have them in fear people fear God's people because it reveals sin in people's lives when you come into someone's presence and you have the Spirit of God living and dwelling inside of you, I guarantee you they can feel it. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. People can feel the Spirit of God when you come into the building. When you come into their presence. And they want to get away from you, I can guarantee you. They're uncomfortable. So anyhow, he says... These Egyptians that you see, these things that are plaguing you, you'll see them no more today. And Moses said unto the people, Fear you not, stand still, see the salvation of the Lord. And then the Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Good God. Thank you, Lord. 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 Jesus, thank you. And Moses, and the Lord said unto Moses, uh -huh. Why are you crying to me? Why are you crying to me? Speaking to the children of Israel that they go forward. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm. 
But lift up your rod and stretch out your hand. Hallelujah. Lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. I declare unto you today as I lift up my rod that God will part your Red Sea for you if you put your faith and trust in Him. Oh, he'll, he'll part your Red Sea. Hallelujah. Whatever is plaguing you, He will divide that that thing that's in front of you where it looks like you can't go anywhere. You're in, up against a wall. I declare to you today that Jesus will part your Red Sea for you. Hallelujah. He'll make a way where there seems to be no way. Hallelujah. Whoa, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I declare that unto you today. If you... If you take the Word of God and you let it become a part of you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He says, Hallelujah. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And I will get me honor on Pharaoh yes, and upon all his hosts and upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. God's going to get glory Yay. out of defeating your enemy. Woo! Hallelujah. He's going to get the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's going to get the glory, the honor upon Pharaoh, upon all his hosts, and upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the angel of God. Jesus which went before the camp of Israel, uh -huh. removed and went behind them, and the pillow of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. Stood behind them. And it came to pass, and it came between the camp of the Egyptians hey. and the camp of Israel, and it was a cloud and darkness to them. Wow. But it gave light by night to these, Woo. so that one came not near the other all night. Amen. God will... He takes the pillow. Hallelujah. He gives us the light and He puts that darkness behind us so the enemy... Oh, the enemy can't see where we are. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He blinds the enemy and gives us light. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I declare that unto you in the Lord today. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God will fight your battle for you. Yes. You don't have to fight it in the flesh. Because we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of the air. And He, Jesus, will take your fight on for you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know, you get tired of fighting yourself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. You get tired of being buffeted by the enemy yes. all the day. Yes. That hey. thing that's bothering you, that thing that's haunting you, that's yes. troubling you. Yes. And Jesus is your answer. Yes. <laughs> Jesus is your answer. Yes. All power in heaven and in earth is given to that name. Yes. So use the name Jesus, Jesus and get out of your trouble. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. Holo kosa la reto. Hola la koramaha lesa kuhuya kirema ho yai. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Korema ho rebakaya. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Samson was tempted over and over. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he gave in to the trick of the enemy. Yes, 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 yes. Don't be a Samson. Thank you, Jesus. Amen? That's right. Praise the Lord. Don't be a Samson and don't even realize that you have departed from the Spirit of God. Wow. That's, a, that's something to think about. You know, Samson got up and... Well, first off, he was married. He had a wife. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Then he went off and found Delilah. Right. 
So that was the first mistake. When he was messing around with somebody that wasn't his wife. Well, amen. Well, amen. You heard it here. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's the truth. It's the truth. If, I'm going to say it for you. Say it. Say it. If you mess around with somebody that ain't your wife or ain't your husband. That's right. Uh huh. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know Thank what you're you doing. Word, Amen. Thank you for your word. Amen. Samson shook himself and found out that he had no more power with God. Um, yeah. Woo, I had a friend one time. Yes, sir. And I say one time, mm -hmm. God put us together immediately. We were instant friends. I've never had an instant friend like that before. Wow. As instantaneous, as soon as we shook hands, it was immediate friendship mm -hmm. in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And we saw uh, He rejected the Word of God. Wow. Unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And from that very day, wow. I saw a shadow come over him. Jesus. And that very day, he went through some kind of trouble mm. for years. He ministered in, in certain churches, and we happened to find out where he was ministering one time. Mm -hmm. And so it had been years since we had seen him, and we had heard of the trouble he had been in. Yeah. Family was sick. They were so sick they couldn't even get up and uh, tend to one another. My That's how sick they were. And uh, they had other troubles too. I won't go into, the, into that. But <clears throat> he was running revival somewhere and we happened to hear about it years, years later. And we went and because he was ministering and you know, say hello and all that. And uh, they were up jumping, shouting and you know, you think it was a regular church service. Mm. But I knew better in the spirit. Yeah. And I was in the Spirit, praising God, had my eyes closed. And He came up in front of me and said, Come on, jump, you know, shout. I said, Don't bother me, I'm in the Spirit. Yes, 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 yes. And I didn't participate in that because I knew it wasn't God. And after the service, we went to get a Coke at a Dairy Cream or whatever it was. And He says... Brother Spivey, what happened? I said, now you've asked me, I'm going to tell you. Amen. And so I said, you remember such and such a time when, when I was ministering and I was ministering the Word of God and you rejected the Word of God. Mm. I said, that day I saw a shadow come over your face. And from that time you've had trouble. He says, for years... I have not felt the Spirit of God. Yeah. Huh? yeah, he jumped and shouted, but he had not felt the Spirit of God. It was all a put on. You know, people are putting on in their lives. They're putting on that, oh, I'm a Christian. Oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. You ask most people nowadays, are you a Christian? Yeah, I'm a Christian. <clears throat> you know that's not true. You know why? Because it's of the life they live and not living a Christian life. You, the fruit bears out what kind of tree it is. If it's a corrupt tree, it's going to have corrupt fruit. If it's a righteous tree, it's going to have righteousness. Yes, it is. Glory. So you can watch somebody's life and see where they are in God. If they're, if they're shacking up, if they're in adultery, they're living a hellish life, you know something's wrong. You know that they don't have God in their life. And do you know what? We're supposed to be the godly man or woman that is supposed to have the Spirit of God to restore such a one, bring them back into the fold, into righteousness. We, we need to tell them that what they're doing is wrong and pray with them. Yeah, people are afraid nowadays. They've got that something chasing them, and that's fear chasing them. Wow. I'm scared to 
go up to somebody and start talking about Jesus, they might not like it. They might, they might say no. <laughs> you know, you don't ask somebody, are you a Christian? You say, do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Are your sins forgiven? Have you got everything under the blood? Amen. Yes, sir. That's what you ask them. Yeah, are you living a righteous life? That's a good one. Amen. Thank you. Are you living for God? Amen. Are you living like you pretended that you're living for God? A lot of people come to church and they jump and they shout and they, the, the music goes and the songs go and they, oh man, they feel good on the outside, but on the inside they're miserable and full of doubt and unbelief and troubles. Yes. But I declare to you today by the Spirit of God that if you open your heart and not just I'm getting ahead of my message here but if you open your heart and worship God in spirit and in truth not just with lip service we have too much lip service nowadays mm. let me go on with this message I'll get to that we have become complacent in our walk with God. Uh -huh. Churches today are like people waiting for Moses to come down off the mountain and said, we don't know what's become of him. That's right. We don't know what's happened to him. Mm -hmm. And so they rose up to play. They made a golden calf and began to worship it instead of the one and only true God of creation. Yes. So today people are looking for other forms of religion. Wow. Wow. <clears throat> They're looking for it to smooth their conscience, yes. okay. to entertain right. socialism within the church, yes. mm. rallies and banquets and games, right. game playing, conventions and tournaments. Right. It's a good thing to fellowship. I'm not knocking fellowship. That's a great thing for God's people to get together yes, and yes. talk about God. Right. Not to go out and play a baseball game to rip and romp and do all that stuff. Amen. That will never take the place of the Word of God ministering under the anointing. It never will. God's Word ministered under the anointing delivers it heals. Yes, yes, yes. It makes anew, it refreshes. Wow. It you. quickens or gives life. Yes. It gives hope, and love, and charity, long suffering, gentleness, kindness, wow. mercy, forgiveness. Hallelujah. Great. All these things are in God's Word yes. and in the anointing yes. that God brings forth in a message. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. The true Word of God is not being preached in most churches today because of the people's complacency. And a complacency means a, a feeling of smug and uh, uncritical satisfaction with oneself or one's achievements. I'm satisfied with myself. I'm satisfied with how I am. You talk to people you know, have, you know, have you received the Holy Ghost? I'm fine. Mm. Sure. You need prayer? I'm, fi I'm okay. Mm. That's right. <coughs> I hear it all the time. That's right. You need prayer today? No, I'm all right. Mm. Yeah. Is that you? Yeah. Is that you? <laughs> Are you all right? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Search your heart and find out. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Colossians 1 and 12. Mm. Give thanks unto the Father, which has made us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, mm -hmm. who has delivered us from the power of darkness yeah. and has translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son. Yes in whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. 
For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. <clears throat> and he is the head of the body, oh, yes. the church. Lord. He's the head of the church. Who is the beginning, mm -hmm. the firstborn from the dead, yes. that in all things he might have the preeminence or the su yes. uh, superiority. Uh, yes, sir. He'll be, he's in superior to everything. Uh -huh. yes, sir. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Oh, yeah. Did you hear that? All fullness. All the fullness of God dwells in Jesus Christ. And having made peace through the blood of His cross, by Him to reconcile all things unto Himself, by Him I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, and you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, Yet now has he reconciled or brought back uh -huh. to God. Thank you, Lord. That's what reconcile means. Yeah, yeah. Bringing you back to God. Amen. Getting the evil out of your mind Lord. and out of your heart. Thank you. In the body of his flesh through death uh -huh. to present you holy. Uh -huh. I said holy. Yeah, holy. 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 To present you holy. And unblameable, unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. <coughs> now, it says if, that's a word, I if, if you continue. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the glory which you have heard, the hope of the gospel which you've heard. You know, people just like Samson, he shook himself, and then he realized that he had messed up. Yes, the spirit, he had, the spirit of God had departed from him. Yes, sir. You know, when we mess up, we depart from the spirit of God. That's right. That's right. He said, "I'll never leave you nor forsake you," but you left Him. When you leave Him, you're in sin. Yes, Lord. Because He's the way, the truth, and the life. And there's only one way. To the Father. Yes, right. And that's through the blood. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you know, you wonder why, and you know, I thought this for, for a long time. Why does God have to have a blood sacrifice? Mm. Preach it, brother. Wow. Why? Thank you, Lord. Because in the beginning, Adam and Eve sinned. Yes, sir. And they had corruptible blood. Mm. Right. And the life is in the blood. Yes, sir. And Jesus had incorruptible blood. So His blood was pure and He was without sin. So when He took on the sin of the world and His physical body died with that incorruptible blood in it, He rose again because it was incorruptible. Couldn't be tainted. Couldn't be polluted. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That was the ultimate sacrifice for us. So we do not, do not have to die in sin. He took on our sin. Amen? Did He take on your sin? Or are you still living in it? Raise your hand if you're still living in sin. Thank God nobody raised their hands. <laughs> Are you a Christian? Oh, everybody raised their hand on that one. Right? Well, you need to think about that thing. Are you really a Christian? Are you Christ-like? Are you living the life? Or is that demon still chasing you and you ain't got rid of him? 
Mm. Or is it a legion chasing you and you ain't got rid of them? Mm. <coughs> In Matthew 15 and 8, this people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Mm. Don't give God lip service. But give Him heart service. True adoration, compassion, Feeling in your love for Him. Thank you. True praise for His wondrous works Hallelujah. in our lives. You. you know, if you can't really love God, mm -hmm. if you don't love your brother, you don't love God in Him. And that's a clue right there. If you can't love other people, right. you don't love God. Right. Because God is love. That's what <clears throat> So many people nowadays they'll come and they'll they'll get in the first part of the service or whatever and they will sing and shout and it's all from this right here. Come on now. It's all from the lips and it's not from the heart. You know, when I pray, I worship God. I love Him. I adore Him. I thank Him. Yes. I magnify Him. I just give Him the glory and the praise for my heart and my soul. Thank You, Jesus. I honor You and I thank You, Lord, from my heart. Oh, and I just give You the glory and the praise. It's all Yours. Thank You, Jesus, for whatever happens in my life. I give Him the glory and the praise. Hallelujah. If you can't let your heart reach out to God and really love Him from your heart. You don't know what love is. You don't know what love is. Amen. Do you know what love is? Do you love God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, your body? Mm. It feels so good to worship God in spirit and in truth. It's a wonderful thing to worship Him and serve Him, honor Him, give Him the glory and the praise, and the magnify Him, give Him the everything. Hallelujah. He created us. He created the world. Created everything in it. Why would you not want to give Him praise? Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He's become our high priest. He's our all in all. If the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled, sprinkling the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ through the eternal spirit, offer himself without spot, without spot to God. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. People walk around with the guilt that they have for years and years and years. I'm going to name this one. What if, well, I can name a bunch of them. But what if somebody had an abortion? And you know that's murder. Right, right. Plain and simple. Right, right. And you can't get over it. Right. Well, it's a, it's a tragic thing to go through. Yes. For any family, any person. That's right. But you know God, God. forgives sinners. Yes, he, does. Yes. he forgives murderers. Yes, he, does. he forgives adulterers. Yes, thank you. Fornicators. Thank you, Jesus. All manner of sin. 
There's only one He won't forgive, and that's the blasphemy of the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. Don't blaspheme His Spirit. He'll forgive everything else, but you have to ask. And then when He forgives you, when He forgives you, that cloud is behind you. And that devil can't come back and say, That's right. Guess what you did? Uh -oh. He's shining his light on your side, you. and on the enemy's side is darkness. Dark. Yes. Amen. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. That's worthy of giving him a praise right there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He creates in us a new creature. Yes, sir. We are, we are refreshed, renewed, yes. and given life. Thank you. And those old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. Amen. Let the newness come into your life and let the oldness yes. depart. Yes. Hallelujah. Let His light shine in you and let that darkness yes. go away. Yes. Put them things behind you and press on toward the mark of the high calling in Jesus Christ. There's a high calling. Calling. There's a there's an upper limit that we need to get to, and that's true worship. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Fornication, same thing. You know, if you've been a fornicator, repent. Yes, Amen. Stop doing what you're doing. Thank you, Jesus. Stop shacking up. Stop lying. Stop cheating. Yes. Stop talking about people. Yes. You're supposed to love people. Yes. Do you know that every single person you meet has one thing prevalent in common? Everybody has a soul. Thank you, Lord. And if you look at every single person, no matter what they look like, no matter what they sound like, yes. what they act like, whatever. That person has a soul. Yes. And if you look at that person as a soul, you will look at them in a totally different light right. than you look at them in the natural. Wow. Right. Wow. Everybody has a soul. Everybody. And that soul needs Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Where were you when God saved you? Come on. You were a soul. Yes. God had compassion on you. Yes. He saved you out of whatever you were into. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. He saved me out of my trouble. Yes, sir. I praise Him for it. Hallelujah. I am not that person I used to be. Don't ever want to be that person I used to be. Amen. No, no, no. That was a hellish person. Yes, But I'm a child of God now. Amen. I'm a son of God. Hallelujah. And I give him the praise for it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, my life is so different. Your life can be so different. So much better. Clean and pure and holy and righteous. But it's left up to you to step forward. You know, you. we have the attitude of move me if you can, God. I, I'm coming to the service. Now you, you move me today. Instead of us moving God, we want God to move us. You make me shout. You make me feel good. Then I'll think about, I'll give you some praise. It don't work that way. In all things, Everything give praise yes. unto Him. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. In 2 Timothy 2 and 15, this is what people need to do. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings. For they will increase unto more what? Ungodliness. So keep your mouth shut. People can't even come to the sanctuary without running their mouth. Hey, did you hear this? Hey, did you hear that? Let me tell you about whatever. 
<laughs> vain babblings, profane. When we hit those doors, we need to be yes. praising God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He says, enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts, and into his courts with praise. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what we need to be doing as soon as we hit those doors coming in. We need to be praising God, giving Him the glory and the honor that He deserves. Hallelujah. He deserves the good. Thank you. He says, and that stuff, the, the babblings, the, their words, uh -huh. eat as doth a canker. Mm -mm -mm. It eats you up. Yes, it does. Amen. 2 Corinthians 6 and 14. This is going to hit somebody here now. <laughs> Second Corinthians six and fourteen. Be you not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? The old things you used to do and the old pals and whatever you used to pal around with, you need to stop it. Amen. You don't go back to the Wallering hole. Right. That's right. And waller with the with the sin that you came out of. That's right. Amen. If God has brought you out of sin, stay out of it. Amen. Right. Yes, sir. Don't go back and waller in the pig pen again. Yeah. Hey. Amen. Amen. Some people have still got one foot in the pig pen. Well. Huh. And one in the church. Good. They're trying to balance it out. Well, but, but when I'm on my job, such and such. And then they lean in this way. Well, I, we got to go to church now. Y'all straighten up. All right. Okay, now I'm going to be a saint today. I'm going to praise. I'm going to look like I'm doing it right. I'm going to clap and I'm going to stomp and I'm going to shout and I'm going to have a good time in church. And then, oh, here comes Monday morning. Hey, you know what? Jesus. That's what happens. Ain't it the truth? Amen. You know it is. So what, what communion has light with darkness? What you should be doing is letting your light so shine so men can see what God has done in your life. And then the Spirit of God will draw those people unto Him. Not unto you, right. unto Him. Yes. Because I saw in my early life, I saw people who had God in their lives and I knew I didn't have Him. Yes. And I wanted Him. Yes. I wanted what they had in their life. Yes. There was something special that I didn't have. Right. It was something that I longed for. I knew it was right. I knew I was wrong. But that something was drawing me by His Spirit. And it was the Spirit of God inside of them drawing me. And that's what I wanted. And the more I saw it, the more I wanted it. Because I knew it was right. I knew it was right. Nobody didn't have to tell me it was right. I knew it was right. Amen. Amen. I saw that in a number of people. And I had one co-worker that I worked with. She was a lady that worked with me at the, at the phone company where I worked. <clears throat> And she mentioned a time or two about, you know, uh, coming to church with her and, and, you know, almost for just one more time. Yes. Just one more time. Jesus. One more invitation. Hallelujah. Thank you. I probably would have found her church. Thank you, Jesus. And I would have been saved so much earlier Thank you. and been out of the trouble that I got myself into. Yes. Because the Spirit of God, it wasn't her church. It was the Spirit of God inside of her that pulled me in God's direction. And that Spirit of God inside of you needs to be strong enough. And you need to be a strong enough Christian so the Spirit of God can move on people and they see your life and see what God has done for you in your life and they'll want the same thing. They don't want your, your babbling and your false accusations and your hooking and all this stuff. 
When they see that, that's a shame and a disgrace yes, to God. Jesus. Trying to say you're a Christian and you're not. No. Fess up. Yeah. Fess up. Glory. Fess up. Thank you, Jesus. Say, no, I'm not living right. Thank you. Come to these altars and pray and ask God to forgive you Glory. and set yourself Amen. on the foundation of Jesus Christ on the rock. And then you'll go far, far in God's kingdom. And leave this stuff alone. Hallelujah. Put the darkness behind you. And let the light of Jesus Christ come forth in your life. Thank you, Jesus. As Brother David comes and prays with you this morning. Hallelujah. Come to these altars. Put your heart. Put your heart on the altars. And let God do something in your life. Hallelujah. Don't sit there on your stool or do nothing. And just do nothing. Do something. Go forward like the Bible said. He told Moses to tell the people to go forward. Hallelujah. Put the past behind and put the light of God in front of you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, thank you, Jesus. And then the Bible said in one of those books of Revelation, and he told one of the churches, he said, do your first works over again. So I feel like everybody, if you have heard this message, it's pricked your heart somewhere. you got a chance to be able to go back to the first works. And start, start over again. You know, we can start afresh every day. Jesus gives us new life every single day. Just take the opportunity now. Everybody who will, come to the altar. Let's pray. Let's get, let's get our, our hearts right before God. And let's also pray for our neighbor. If you don't feel like that you've got anything you need to straighten out in your life between you and God, Pray for the person next to you. Pray for the whole church. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this day. Lord, we ask you, Lord, forgive our sins. God, we confess before you. You said, Lord Jesus, that you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. If we would confess them before you, we confess, Lord Jesus, that we have been doing the way we should be doing. Lord, there's many things that we desire to do for your sake. But Lord, we've been falling short. Lord, even as your word says, we've fallen short of the glory of God. But God, we come to you and we ask you in Jesus' holy name to forgive all of our old past ways, our unrighteousness, our sins, our wickedness. God, let us, let us be into a new, righteous, holy way, Lord. Turn us, Lord Jesus, from the ways of darkness to the ways of light. God, you said in this message that you would take that that devil and put it behind us, Lord Jesus, and we wouldn't have to worry about him anymore. So we ask you, God, take all that trouble, Lord Jesus, that we've been getting into, Lord, because of our own our own lust, our own desires that have been fighting against us and warring against our souls. We ask you in Jesus' name to take that lust out of us, Lord, and take the, just the destruction away from us. But God, instead, replace it with your holiness, with your righteousness, with a desire, a deep desire to find you, to search for you with all of our heart. Lord, help us to love you with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And God, even as Brother Spider has preached this morning, Lord, there's a neighborhood right out in front of us, God, that we need to conquer for you. There's people on our jobs that we need to find. Lord, an opportunity to be able to, to tell them about Jesus. God, in Jesus' name, equip us, Lord Jesus, that we will be able to go and tell the gospel, to tell people about you, Jesus. Lord, and to not just leave them in, in the sins that they're in, but God, help us to take the, the, the big old log out of our own eye that we can see clearly to remove the moat, Lord Jesus. Some of us, God, have been walking around with moats in our eyes, with beams in our eyes, trying to get specks out of other people's eyes. God, help us to search our own hearts. Lord, you said that if we judge ourselves, we would not be judged. Help us to judge ourselves today, God, that we might be able to know our own hearts, and that we might be repentful of those things that we've done wrong. Lord, and clear up our eyes, clear up our sight. Lord, make our eyes whole, not evil, Lord, that we might be able to see clearly and that we might have light inside of us, Lord Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for every single person here that you will give them the light of life, Lord. You've come to give us life and that more abundantly. Lord, fill them in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Jesus name, with your life, Lord. Holy, 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 holy
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holy, holy God. Holy God. So good. Oh, we praise you. We thank you. Everyone who will, put your hand over your heart and say, Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that God raised you from the dead on the third day. I believe that your blood cleanses me from all unrighteousness and cleanses my conscience from those old sins. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving me a brand new life, making me a brand new creature. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just praise Him. Praise Him for the new life that you have in Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving you a dying for your sins, for giving you peace between you and God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Those of you who wish to return to your seats, if you have a need for prayer for anything, you can stay up here or you can come up. We will pray for you. God will heal you, deliver you, and straighten out anything that's wrong in your life. If you need prayer for anything, we are ready to. The altars are open, but also we're open to pray for you, lay hands on you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank God for this opportunity. As Sister Spivey said, now we are looking forward. If God will give the open door for an opportunity to be able to have revival here, we, we look for that because. Uh, all three of us being ministers, we all feel a different uh, weight for this church. We all feel a different burden for the, the word of God that God has portioned out to us. You know, Paul said, he said, woe to me if I don't preach the gospel. If I, don't, if I try not to preach the gospel, he said, a portion of it will be uh, given to me anyway. And we all have something that we desire. I'll just tell them that we all three without knowing about it. Amen. I'll sleep last night. Amen. Amen. All three of us, we, we didn't, my parents and I live in different houses, um, but we all three were up at early hours of the morning, uh, losing sleep, praying about the, the church here. And, you know, the Lord has different places for each of us. And the Bible says that God gives us the ministries of the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the teacher, the pastor. These fivefold parts of the ministry are necessary for the perfecting of the saints. And so I want to encourage you, like Sister Spivey said, if it's not us, get somebody else. But bring someone to, to continue this revival because revival has started today. I don't know if y'all if y'all really realize that revival has come to your church today. And if you can continue in that revival, souls will be saved. We offer ourselves as servants, as willing ministers of the gospel, to come and help you. And we're willing for that. If you give us the opportunity, we'll snatch it up in an instant. Because God already has spoken to all three of us different things that, that your church needs. And we just want to help you. We thank you for giving us the opportunity today. And we just want to end in prayer. Father, we thank you. Thank you, thank you for everything that you've done in the service. Thank you, Lord. Lord, as we move in whatever direction you have us to go, yes, Lord. Lord, we ask you, Jesus, to go with us. Thank you. Lord, be alive. Lord, you said that your word is quick, alive. Lord, awaken your word in your servants. Awaken your word, O oh God. As we go out, Lord Jesus, from these doors, Lord, let the people that are outside of this church know, God, the words of your everlasting gospel through our lips in Jesus' holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And turn back over to Pastor Capers. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Let's thank God one more time for the word of God. Amen. For God's word. God sent his word. God placed it on our hearts. Amen. Our brothers spied in the harnages. Amen. To come. Amen. And to bring to us the word of God. Amen. 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 God has really been speaking. Amen. To us. Uh, even in the Sunday school this morning. And I mean it's awesome how God speaks. Amen. His word. And, and we were just talking about how God has a word that proceeds. It's not just one time. God's word proceeds. Amen. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word. Amen. That proceeded out of the mouth of God. 
Amen. He may tell you to go to, 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 to sacrifice that child, but then he might tell you don't sacrifice it. Right, right. And Abraham would have missed it. Amen. If he had not listened to the preceding right. word of God. That's right. Amen. 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 So we have to stay open unto the spirit of God. Yes, God. Amen. We thank God today for the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. Amen. And, and God is, amen, delivering us today. <laughs> Amen. Thank God for deliverance that is in the house today. Amen. Right now, God, deliverance is in the house. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.